Hi, as you know, farmers' protests have been happening all over the country. After violence erupted in New Delhi in January, people were talking about the protests on Twitter using a certain specific hashtag, which the government found provocative. So, the government body which handles internal security told the government body which handles internet-related stuff to tell Twitter to take down the accounts of the people who were using provocative language and that specific hashtag. So, the Ministry of Electronics and IT, which is the internet-related stuff body, sent legal orders to Twitter demanding that approximately 250 accounts be taken down. Now, what were these orders? The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology sent these orders under Section 69A of the IT Act. Under Section 69A, the government can direct any company like Twitter to block public access to information like tweets, you know, for reasons like national security. So, Twitter banned these accounts which included Caravan, Kisan Ekta Murcha and so on. And people got really concerned. Because how can you just ban people's access to their Twitter accounts without even telling them why when they're providing such important and critical updates and information about the farmers' protests? On February 1st itself, in the evening, Twitter reinstated these Twitter accounts, but the general public got worried and concerned and they said that such a thing shouldn't happen again. Because this is basically tantamount to government censorship, which is totally unconstitutional. The government was also not too happy with Twitter starting to reinstate the accounts. The Ministry of Electronics and IT sent Twitter a non-compliance notice, essentially warning it that it can be charged under Section 69A of the IT Act if it doesn't comply with the takedown orders. This basically means that Twitter could face criminal proceedings and the staff could face up to seven years of imprisonment. On the 4th of February, the Ministry of Electronics and IT again sent orders to Twitter saying that now 1,178 more accounts need to be taken down. Now, on 10th February, Twitter released an official blog post to bring some clarity and transparency into the situation. They essentially said that since they received legal orders, they did take lots of actions to reduce the visibility of harmful content, but it won't be taking down thousands of accounts because it's just following Indian law. Because according to Indian law, we have the freedom of speech and expression. Then, on the same day, the Ministry of Electronics and IT tweeted this saying that a blog post in such a situation is highly unusual and the government will share its response soon. Then the next day on 11th February, the centre informed the parliament that the IT rules are to be amended to make social media platforms more accountable to the government. This essentially means that the government will gain more power over what we see, don't see, say and don't say on social media. There are a lot of glaring issues with what's going on. First and foremost, we don't really exactly know the rationale behind the Twitter takedowns because the Ministry of Electronics and IT has not made these orders publicly available. This kind of non-disclosure seriously impacts our freedom of speech and access to what we call judicial remedies. Now you tell me, if you don't know anything about the situation you're in, how are you going to go to court and challenge it or defend yourself? You can't. This, by the way, is in breach of the Supreme Court's orders in two judgments known as the Shreya Singhal and Anuradha Basin judgments where we basically found out that we have the right to such public information and that censorship has to follow the rules of transparency and proactive disclosure. A really important thing to remember here is that we do have the constitutionally guaranteed fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression. We don't just exercise this right outside and in offline spaces, but also online on our computers and phones. So to understand the implication of this series of events on freedom of speech and expression, I reached out to Dev Datta, IFF's in-house lawyer. So let's see what she has to say. Hi, Satnid. What this means is that Twitter is now taking its obligations towards its Indian users more seriously and is investing a considerable amount of time, energy and resources into defending the rights of its Indian users. The government has claimed that blocking of all of these accounts is necessary to prevent incitement of violence and public order disruptions. However, the government is not always right. In India, we have a modern and progressive constitution which recognizes free speech and the right to receive information as a fundamental right. The standards for free speech under the Indian constitution are also very similar to standards present under international human rights instruments like the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which have been ratified by India. So this characterization of Twitter trying to impose an American First Amendment conception of free speech upon Indians is just not accurate. 
based on publicly available information it seems that the blocking request made by the government is quite vague overbroad and disproportionate and it would not pass muster even under domestic indian law it's not fair that anybody is stifled unnecessarily whether we're talking about mundane stuff or we're talking about serious and important human rights issues such as the ones relevant to the farmers protests because this sets a scary precedent for the future